one of the applications of the first order differential equations that we have done so far is what we call uh, orthogonal trajectories what are these so orthogonal trajectories curve which are perpendicular yes so it is basically two families of uh, curves which are perpendicular to each other or which are orthogonal to each other but how do you define <coughs> the curves to be orthogonal how do you say that one curve uh, one curve is orthogonal to another curve in form of slopes in form of their tangent lines at that point so what do you do you take this point you draw tangent line to one curve and another curve if these tangents are orthogonal then we call these curves are orthogonal to each other because in the curved lines how do we define angles we don't know so let us take an example these are uh, used in some sort of uh, uh, electromagnetism or some other things but i don't know exactly like you have some family of curves this is called family of circles i have another family of curves which are lines which are passing through the origin and you can see that these are orthogonal to each other you take this point you take this angle orthogonal this angle orthogonal orthogonal here orthogonal here orthogonal so i give you a family of circles which are passing through the origin i ask you to find out the orthogonal trajectories to this you will say me the answer would be the family of lines in the origin y is equal to k times x but the question is how to find out this every time you don't know the exact structure okay this is family of circles you draw it in this way then the orthogonal trajectory would be the lines passing through the origin then the answer should be this one orthogonal trajectory is for this one is this for this one is this but how this is the case so what do you do you are given one thing let's say you are given a family like this this one you first evaluate dy by dx and you get some function you differentiate this one you are given implicit function or whatever we have done in our intermediate class you can always find dy by dx to find out the orthogonal trajectories to this one you do one thing you just reciprocate it and give it a negative sign this would be differential equation for these curves and this would be the differential equation for these curves this is the idea behind that nothing else and why we are doing so because you know very well m1 upon this thing is slope mm -hmm. m1 this thing is slope m2 mm -hmm. when something is orthogonal their product is minus 1 uh, minus 1 obviously here when you multiply these your product would be mm. minus 1 so this is the idea behind that so let us do this example we are not doing in detail let us take this one our answer should be of this form yes. if you take this one our answer should be of this form this one. so let's do this take one let's name this one and let's name this two so differentiate one with respect to x on both sides what do you get 2x plus 2y dy by dx equals 0. Is it okay? Yes. Then you take 2x on that side. 2y dy by dx minus 2x. 2 cancels out. So dy by dx minus x over y. This is your differential equation for this curve. And if you want differential equation for the curves orthogonal to this one you just do one thing negate it divide so this is orthogonal trajectory curve dy by dx you just negate this one yes. it means minus becomes plus by plus becomes minus and the reciprocal would be y over y over x yes sir you get this thing now this is the differential equation for orthogonal trajectories when you solve this you exactly get 
this addition. So let's check it whether it happens or not. Log 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 we could do that. So <coughs> dy over y equals dx over x after separable and then integrating. This becomes log y log x plus your constant is log c log y is log cx cx then y is equal to cx cx kx or cx don't matter. Yes, sir. So this is the orthogonal trajectories to the family of circles which pass through the origin. The question is, how can we do it in the case of polar coordinates? Because we have the functions in polar coordinates as well, r and theta, and how to find out orthogonal trajectories in that case. So I'm giving you the bigger picture, uh, the formula for that, and you just need to keep that in your mind, nothing else. So in uh, Cartesian coordinates, the slope is <coughs> given by dy by dx. dx. In polar coordinates, the slope is given by this. So it is given by r d theta by dr. This is a slope. You find out the value of r d theta by dr. Yeah. Because you know very well your function contains r and theta, you can find out the value of r d theta by dr easily. Then what do you do? Your right hand side would be some function in r and theta. This is the family of, uh, this is the differential equation for family of uh, curves. Family of curves. Now you need differential equations for the family of the curves orthogonal to the original curves. Family of orthogonal trajectories, let's say. So you just do the same thing. You just write this f of r over theta. Yes, sir. Minus. But your left hand side must be this one. R d theta by d. If your left hand side do not contain r, what do you do? You first multiply r by both sides. Then you invert the things. So you have to keep just this idea in your mind. Nothing else. Then the things would be easy. We have a few other equations in first order. Let us discuss those. Then we are going ahead. I think what is left? Not there are some equations which are called equations solvable for P. And let me define P. dy by dx in short form is written as P. So equations solvable <coughs> for P. So what types of equation are these? These are the equations which are simply factorizable. We can factorize the equations and we can solve the each and every part separately and then we combine the solutions that's the total solution for that differential equation. And in those equations we always write dy by dx in terms of P so that things become easy. A bit easy. And when I write p square, it means this is the second order. dy by dx square. square. It's not second order. Second order. Degree two. Yes. So let me write one equation: x square p square plus x square p square plus x p minus y square minus y equals 0. The question is, can we factorize it in some sense? Or not? 
power p can be y square minus y constant
members there on only p what to do in this case how to solve this is this linear no sir not linear because of square and dependent variable in product also what you do you take x to be dependent variable p to be independent variable then this becomes linear, linear yes sir then this becomes linear. linear and you can solve it easily what happens when you solve it what happens <coughs> you solve a linear equation what type of function do you get you get implicit or explicit solution <coughs> you get explicit <coughs> solution <coughs> answers your dependent variable is a function of you get this after solving this you manipulate the things you take x to be dependent p to be independent you get this but what do you need here you can solve this and you can find out the value of p in terms of x let me call it p is equal to f inverse of x whatever then what you do you put the value of p what is that dy by dx is equal to f inverse of x now you need the value of y you just take dx here and y would be simply integral of f inverse of x dx plus c plus c that would be your solution it would be a bit lengthy but the method is this nothing else this might be a linear equation in p in p but this is not this is a linear equation in x, x. and y is treated as and p is treated as independent and x is dependent yes sir do you have an idea what are the equations solvable for x you differentiate x <coughs> and then there will be no more x in your equation let me give you an example for that we are not solving it just i am giving you an example so sir excuse me for a minute sir sir you have a problem sir you have to write that and then the soluble y you then it demand cha ho sir kano cha ho yani equation mein lera demand ye any equation ho je jake taha differentiate kayo with respect to x theek hai then this y term will disappear Okay. You differentiate this with respect to x. This okay. becomes dy by dx, and okay. you know very well this is p. Okay. Okay. So in your equation there is no more y. y. Okay. It is y implicitly in dy by dx, okay. but okay. seemingly there is no y. Okay. You can solve it now in x and p. Okay. Then you get the solution, or the solution depends upon the equation. Okay. If you get the solution, you find the value of p yes, explicitly. put the value of p dy by dx yeah. integrate you get y y done after integration yes. and this is a direct integration because this will only be function of function x. of x you yes. can integrate it directly this is a separate equation in other words in a book method na hai no linear na hai bas bahut hai no this is this is mostly <coughs> non linear you can see p square means non linear okay equations solvable for x, x. equations solvable for x in the example is xp equals 1 plus p square <coughs> is this solvable for x it means what you what you need to do you need to now differentiate with respect to p now why differentiate with respect to y y <coughs> then what happens this term becomes dx by dy that would be equal to 1 upon d you will see that there will be no more x in this equation in this furthermore and you can solve it easily <coughs> i think these are these will not appear mostly into the exams but we have another equation what we call clairaut's equation that appears but it's very simple mm. <laughs> 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 
It is equation of this form. Okay, so this is clearer situation whose general form is y is equal to x p plus f of p, where p is the same thing dy by dx. Its general solution is always this. When you just uh, replace p by c, c, that's your general solution. Just replace P by C. C. For example, I give you an equation y is equal to x p plus f of p. Let's see, let's say the f of p is p square plus 1. Then its general solution would be y is equal to cx plus c square plus 1. C square plus <coughs> Can you check whether this is a general solution or not? <coughs> you check in the in the general solution <coughs> this much. You just need to keep this form in your mind and this general solution in your mind. That's all. Now what I do, I differentiate this dy by dx equals c. c. This is a constant. The derivative would be 0. zero. So, p is my p is equal to c. c. Put here, p is equal to c, p is equal to c, and this y remains same, these two are equal. Hence, it's a solution. So, it's not a big deal to solve it, but at least we should know that what is the general form of a Clairaut's equation, <coughs> and what is the general solution for that. Nothing else. There are some other solutions in this case as well, but we should only keep this thing in your mind, nothing else. The final thing that we need to discuss is what we call the Curtis equation today. <coughs> Maybe we are never go ahead for today only. So the general form of this equation is y prime plus p of x y plus q of x y square equals r of x. So this is the general form of the Curtis equation. What happens when r of x is zero? When r of x is 0, then what happens? It's a Bernoulli equation. When this thing is 0, you can see this is a Bernoulli equation. When this thing is 0, this is a linear equation. And, uh, okay, so this is what we call the <coughs> Riccati equation. But the thing is that how to solve it? We don't have any exact method to solve this differential equation. But when we are given a solution, then we can find another solution for this. Let us say that you are given a solution of this differential equation to be y1. As I told 
you we cannot solve it directly okay i give you this equation i ask you okay give me the solution no but I, if i give you one solution one particular solution that satisfies this differential equation then what you can do you can substitute y of this differential equation to be this given solution plus some 1 upon u u is the another solution that you need y1 is the particular solution given to you u is the another solution that you want if you substitute this particular quantity into this differential equation then what happens then you can reduce this equation into a linear equation then your Riccati equation becomes linear so this is the thing that we need to keep in our mind now we are going for a, for an example otherwise this idea would not be clear so differential equation given to us externally <coughs> a particular solution given to us if it is not given to us we can no. think of for that solution we can guess that what should be the particular solution for this equation then we should apply the transformation and then we will get a linear equation so let us take one equation from exercise or some else. minus y by x example dy by dx minus y by x minus x cube by square equals minus x power 5 so it's, it's, it's exactly this form so the question says that by finding a particular solution, find the solution for this Riccati equation. Now what should be the particular solution? You always start with some uh, simplest solutions. Does this constant solution satisfy this equation? Kindly check and tell me. Y is equal to 1 is constant solution. Does it satisfy? Square of this is x square 
प्लस टू एक्स अपॉन यू प्लस वन अपॉन यू स्क्वायर इक्वल्स माइनस एक्स पावर फाइव सो ऐसे Okay. Now let us complete this thing. So how to go ahead? Uh, I am doing one thing. I am multiplying minus u square on both sides. This will make our life a bit easy. Multiplying minus u square here, minus minus plus u square u square cancel. We get du by dx, dx, and this would be u upon x u plus u by x, x, and this would be two u x power plus yes sir two u x power four two u x power four four two u x power four plus x cube plus x cube. x cube equals zero. zero. Now this is du by dx plus one over x plus two x power four to u equals minus x cube. So this is a linear equation. Linear equation. U. You can see this is du by dx. This is u. We call this thing to be p of x. We call this thing to be q of x. Q of x. So just keep one thing in in your mind. This is the Bernoulli equation. You are either given a particular solution, or you are supposed to Fine. guess it by yourself. Then you apply these transformations. This transformation will help you to convert your Riccati equation into linear equation. A linear equation, always linear in u. Linear in u. I think I don't know exactly. Uh, rather than applying this transformation, if you apply this transformation, y is equal to y one plus u. I'm not writing one over u. I'm writing u. Then this transformation transforms your equation into Bernoulli. Bernoulli. You may check it. I don't know exactly. And this one over u transformation transforms into linear directly. If you go to Bernoulli, then you have to go linear again. Again, linear. That's the yes, problem. So I think this is good. <coughs> Now, when you solve it, what happens? You get the value of u, u. as a function of c. X. Because this is in u, you solve it by applying integrating factor in formula. You get the value for u. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, expli explicitly. So, what is the general solution? Is that the general solution only? The general solution is this. Y is equal to yes, sir. Y one plus one over u. One over u. The general solution. So you get this value. <coughs> you put this in this one. This is your particular solution. Original transform. Plus this is your general solution. This is your complete general solution for your differential equation. You find the value of u. Put it here. That's all. Yes, sir. Nothing else. So this is how we solve the Riccati equation. But you may check this one whether this transformation converts this into a Bernoulli equation or uh, not. But this is Riccati. A particular solution. This transformation leads us to a linear equation which can be solved easily. Any question? Okay. Sorry.